Hello, David Harper at Bionic Turtle with first in my series on toolkits for the financial analyst. And I start with a basic tool, discounted cash flow. We need three things to do that. First, we need an assumption about the term structure of interest rates. Here's mine. Second, we need as raw inputs, a series of expected future cash flows. I'm keeping it simple here and assuming we expect $100 next year and $100 in two years, that's 2012, and then $100 in three years, 2013. The third thing is just a technical decision about what kind of compound frequency or discount frequency we're going to use. So that's three things we need. Let's look at the first thing, the term structure assumption. What we typically do is build that up with some theory, and we start with the real risk-free rate, minus flat at 4%. And then we add a risk premium or risk premiums, I should say. I'm keeping it simple. My risk premium here is a bucket of risks that we just throw all those risks in together to create one number. But it can include, it should include something for inflation, for liquidity risk, default risk, and a maturity premium. The longer you're waiting for that money, the more it's at risk. So mine here is pretty simple. It's upward sloping, mainly to reflect the maturity. So that's my risk premium, again, a bucket of different risks within it. So then we take the real risk-free rate at our risk premium, which includes inflation, so the real becomes a nominal rate. So my one-year rate is 5%, my two-year rate is 6%, my three-year rate is 7%, so I do have an upward sloping term structure. Sometimes when we're really being simple, we use a flat structure, that's okay, but it's more realistic to use the rate that's appropriate for the term. So I've done the first thing. I've developed my term structure assumption that I will use for discounting. Here are my raw inputs. That's my second thing that I need. And the third thing is to decide the compound frequency. So the, probably the most intuitive here is just a discrete annual compound frequency. What, was that, what would that look like? Well, I take my future value. I've named these cells in advance just to keep make the formula more readable. And I take one plus the rate and I'm going to raise it to n the number of years. So that's how I would discount that first $100 at 5% one year. And this formula reflects an assumption of annual compound frequency or annual discrete frequency. So I have the 100 is discounted on an annual basis to 95.24. I'll copy that over and similarly. Now, I could do this at semi-annual frequency as well, and so it's very sim similar, future value 1 plus the rate, but now I'm compounding semi-annually, semi so I'm going to divide the rate by 2, because it's not 5% once per year, it's 2.5% every 6 months or semi-annually. So that's the key to semi-annual. I do need to do my compounding, but now instead of n, I'm going to do n times 2 because we're compounding twice per year. So see the difference? That's the essential difference between going from annual to semi-annual compounding. And appropriately, I get a lower number. Copy these over. Here's my 8135 is the present value of $100 received at the end of three years, discounted semi-annually at 7%. In both of these cases where it's discrete, of course, then I add my, my different payments together over the three years, and this reflects the present value of the three cash flows. And so you'll notice I have a slightly lower number for the semi-annual. Finally, I can do this continuously. And the way to do this continuously is to take that future value and multiply it by the exponential of negative the rate times the number of years. This now assumes continuous compounding. That would be e raised to the negative rate times number of years. Copy that. And notice I can do the same thing here. Three cash flows. The sum of those is the present value of those three flows. And this continuous is the most rapid I can do the discounting, and so it's going to be the smallest value. Is there a right or wrong here? Generally, no. These discrete frequencies reflect the 
comp actual real practice. And we typically see the continuous compound frequency in academic finance because the formulas here are more tractable. Notice how simple and elegant this formula is. So that's the introduction to discounted cash flow. David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.